After the Minnesota Fighting Vikings fired head coach Mike Zimmer, it was assumed that most of the assistants would be scurrying away, finding jobs elsewhere. Now, I would like to keep a couple of the assistants, not gonna lie, Keenan McCardell, Candy Palomalu, uh, Phil Rauscher, uh, maybe Andre Patterson as DC, definitely D-line coach. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But one of them... Ah, it was kind of over was offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak and Jeremy Fowler ESPN reporting that the Panthers uh, looked at the Vikings offense this year is like, got to get us some of that. The Panthers are planning to talk with Vikings OC Clint Kubiak for their opening offensive coordinator uh, job per source. Kubiak has been with Minnesota for the last three years. Now respect Kubiak uh, two years, 2019-2020. He was very solid as quarterbacks coach with Kirk Cousins. I think the Cousins had some of his best football of his career under Clint Kubiak's tutelage. But this year, the offense, ah, not so much. But may, the phrasing on this, maybe they're not even going to talk to him about the OC position. Maybe they're like, hey, Clint, do you know anyone who's good? Can you give us their number or their Snapchat or whatever? <clears throat> uh, but the Vikings offense this year under Clint Kubiak, 14th in points, 12th in yards, first in turnovers. Woo! They took care of the football. Uh, points per drive, they're 15th in the league. Third down for what? They're 26th. Uh, red zone, 9th. Uh, DVOA, 16th. PFF, 11th overall. Uh, EPA per play, expected points per, uh, to, you know, whatever it is, uh, 17th as frustration first in the league. That's right. So the Vikings offense this year was extremely average. They were really good in spurts. They put they racked up and stacked up a bunch of points in a couple of games. But when you needed it, when you needed to stay on the field, big third down conversions, it was rough. Like as evidenced by you know, 26 and third down run, run, pass, punt, run, run, pass, punt. Now, Clint is still technically under contract with the Vikings, even though everyone and their mom expects uh, the staff to be fired once I hire uh, someone new. But we need first round pick minimum plus Brian Burns and Jeremy Chin. And then maybe we talk. Maybe it's possible. But uh, this would be the second time that the Panthers just poached uh, Vikings offensive coordinator talent. Because remember, uh, at the end of the Ron Rivera era, they uh, they snatched up a North Turner and Scotty doesn't know. Oh, Scotty doesn't know. Oh, that's right. And Kubiak, like we said, he was fine. He, he was okay. Went through a lot of growing pains. And the frustration was, you look how much talent that you have on this team. You had Cousins playing some of the best football of his career. Justin Friggin Jefferson and Thielen when he was healthy. KJ really blossoming in year two. You had Gronklin. You had Dalvin. You had King Kenne. And what's, what's frustrating is that they were uh, unable to consistently target Justin Jefferson, especially in the middle of the season. They got things right towards the end of the year at times, but just getting him the ball creatively. Ooh, they lined him up in the backfield. Great. Congratulations. It just... You didn't use enough of your playmakers, and it just fell into the same old Zimmer offensive run, run, pass, punt premise. It, it did. And actually, I think that is the reason why Clint Kubiak got the job, because I think Zimmer was sick and tired of OCs that would challenge him. You look at Norv, you look at Shermer, you look at JDF, uh, Clint Ku or, uh, Gary Kubiak, that was more of a collaboration. But I think Zimmer saw Clint as a first-time play caller. He's like, I can control him. I can get him to run my offense, because you've heard in the past, you know, Zimmerman press conferences. Oh, we need to run the ball more. Well, why are we throwing so much? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but you didn't really hear that too often this year, uh, other than in game when the Vikings were running the ball, running the piss out of the football in the first half. And then the halftime report is like, uh, head coach Mike Zimmer says that the team needs to run the ball more. Shocker. Shocker, right? But uh, also a problem with Kubiak is that he did not have a veteran on staff that he could lean on. You know, someone that he could bounce ideas off of. Someone, ideally, who had called plays before. He didn't have his pops. And we're going back to the whole nepotism thing where should Clint Kubiak have gotten this job after his dad? Maybe. Maybe not. But, I mean, he was a – it's not like he was the water boy and then all of a sudden he was OC. He was uh, Kirk Cousins' quarterback's coach for two seasons. So – that's whatever there. But it would have been great if Gary would have gotten off the ranch in Texas and just be like, hey, I'll be in the building a couple days a week. Kid, bounce stuff off of me. And maybe they did talk. Maybe they talked on the Zoom or uh, on Gary's jitterbug phone. I don't really know. But Rick Dennison was also supposed to be that guy uh, until he got promoted via firing. Uh, and uh, Rick Dennison, love or hate him. Mostly hate him. Most mostly hate his offensive line coaching. Uh, but he had been an uh, offense coordinator before in this league with the uh, Bills and with the with the uh, with the Jets. So, yeah, not having a, a veteran, even though 
Tennyson was not good. But just have, having someone where they can bounce ideas off of, he didn't have that. He was by himself, especially on game day. The only one he could really turn to was Zimmer because no one else on that staff has called plays at the NFL level before. And I don't know. Uh, maybe this will be a golden opportunity. Like maybe uh, Clint Kubiak will get this job. He'll spread his wings. He'll open up his entire playbook as opposed to just focusing on just like this is a very small part of it uh, because he had to acquiesce to Mike Zimmer. And maybe Matt Rule will give him the latitude to just really kick up the Panthers offense. Uh, it didn't work with Joe Brady. And remember a couple years ago, Joe Brady was the cat's ass when it came to, oh, he's the next, oh, he's the next Bill Walsh. He's the next offensive minded guy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but the Panthers, I mean, they've been actively trying to trade Christian McCaffrey for the last two years. I don't think they'll have any takers, but maybe he'll be there. Uh, Chuba Hubbard does seem legit, the pride of Oklahoma State. They have DJ Moore and not much else. Uh, Taylor Moten. Hey, reunited with Pat Elfline. So cool. So I, but. <sighs> I don't know. Like, Panthers, if you want to go down this road, go ahead, man. But I, I did feel like Clint Kubiak, I mean, maybe uh, a couple years down the road, he is one of the best play callers in the league. Uh, if he's just given the freedom to call the plays that he wants, maybe he still will be a head coach someday. But it didn't work out this year in Minnesota. Like, you, you clearly wanted more. The offense wasn't necessarily the problem at times, but a lot of times it was, especially just their inability to stay on the field on third down. But. It'd be what it be. Uh, your thoughts, Panthers, they want to get into the Clint Kubiak business. Uh, we'll let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.